Federal officials now believe the White House and the president's plane, Air Force One, were also being targeted by terrorists. Republican Congressman Dan Miller was aboard Air Force One with President Bush on Tuesday, shortly after the attacks occurred. He's in Washington. Congressman Miller, good morning. Good morning. What can you tell me about um, the, the attitude aboard Air Force One that day? Um, on Tuesday morning, uh, President Bush uh, visited an elementary school, Booker Elementary in Sarasota, Florida, mm -hmm. in my home district. And uh, he arrived shortly before 9, about the time I think the first plane uh, crashed into the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, he met, I met him at the, as he arrived, and he immediately went into a conference call with uh, Condi Rice and then proceeded with his program. Then, he, as we saw in the news, how he was found out about the second crash, and the whole plans that morning changed, and they immediately uh, left for the airport. The uh, plane took off in a very steep uh, uh, ascent because of security reasons. Uh, but it was just the state of shock that everyone else in this country was uh, sensing. But it was, to me, an amazing time to be on Air Force One and, uh, well, and trying to find out what is happening. We're all, the entire nation was uh, watching and glued to their TV sets. Was there, was there anger on board? Was, were there security concerns on board? Uh, the security concerns uh, were to get out of there right away. And that was when the plane took off at a very rapid uh, speed and climbed at an altitude that was amazing. Uh, it went up to a very high altitude to, for safety, over 40,000 feet. Uh, it was heading back to Washington, but during the uh, return trip, as we got, I think, to North Florida, they realized there was some credible and serious threats to Air Force One and the president. And the plane changed directions and uh, headed, we were told, due west initially. And you could look down and see the Gulf of Mexico along the Mississippi Gulf Coast area. Uh, and then it proceeded to Barksdale Air Force Base. Right. It went down to Louisiana, and from there it took off again and wound up going to Nebraska. At any point during this time, were you told where you were heading? Uh, we were told that we were going to Barksdale, and actually in Barksdale is where Congressman Putman uh, and I got off the plane along with a number of the members of the media. So you didn't make it on to Nebraska? No, I did not go to Nebraska. I just went to Louisiana. During that time, did you sense uh, a degree of anger aboard Air Force One? I think it was more a sense of shock in the country. There was an anger, but it was just a total shock that you could, hard to comprehend as everyone in this country that the World Trade Centers were collapsed, that the Pentagon could be attacked. Um, so that was more of a state of sh you know, shock and um, incredible what was going on rather than anger immediately, I think. Was there any debate whatsoever about where the plane should go? Um, as you know, there were considerable questions after the fact that the, the president truly belonged in Washington, uh, that he should have been visible there, was, and that the, uh, so, that the uh, Secret Service wanted him elsewhere. Did you see any, any signs of debate? I was not part of that debate, of course. That was uh, for the security purposes. But uh, I did meet with the president before we got to Louisiana in his office at the front of the plane. He discussed the threats on him. Uh, I can't dis discuss them now. I prefer that the security... Uh, Intelligence people disclose that, but it was a serious threat on the president of the United States. Uh, and so I think the decision was right to move. I know he was anxious to get back to Washington uh, to be at the command center, and his wife was there in Washington. So it, it was not the intent of the president to not return to Washington immediately. But uh, uh, you, you have to do what you have to do in that crisis. And remember, this is 11 o'clock in the morning. Things were still uh, evolving during the day, and we didn't know for sure if there were even more hijackers out there. And we're just, the planes are all being grounded. So there was serious concern, but a decision made by more of the uh, intelligence and security forces around the president. All right. Congressman Dan Miller. Congressman, I'm glad you're safe. Thank you. Thank you. All righty.